Hi, this is David Bonacciano. Welcome to video 2D, which is the fourth and final video devoted to the quantitative analysis for the 2012 Financial Risk Manager exam. So this is a part one topic. And that means we conclude the two final readings from quantitative analysis. And that these two are, I've grouped them together because it's volatility is the theme. And then of the two, I will tell you that the John Hall is far, by far the more meaningful to us from the exam perspective. So in these videos, I'm usually just referring to the pragmatic perspective of the exam. And we know that the John Hall is far more testable than the Linda Allen. We can think about this, think about the, <coughs> excuse me, Linda Allen is supporting the John Hall. Chapter 22 is eighth edition. If you happen to be using an earlier edition of John Hall, which is an expensive book, no worries. This is chapter 19 in earlier versions, six and seven. Even if you're back two versions, sixth version of uh, John Hall, sixth edition, I should say, it's essentially the same uh, chapter. This chapter on estimating volatilities and correlations really, for our purposes, has not changed. And so we'll look at the, uh, the, the, the three basic flavors of volatility that we want to know for exam purposes. As usual, I've got learning spreadsheets that accompany this content, and that, that's 2D1 and 2D2, which I've tagged as high relevance. For exam purposes, that means if you get a chance, I'd love you to be able to open up that spreadsheet simply because I called it a practice bag because I've laid out uh, columns for each of the uh, primary flavors of volatility we look at. And this will this allows you really to practice with changing assumptions as much as you would like. And practice makes perfect in regard to this volatility estimate. So let's look at chapter 22 where we're, we start by with the aim, discuss how historical data and various weighting schemes can be used in estimating volatility. So we're going to see that the, the key idea here is different weighting schemes. And we start with the most basic, which is unweighted. We could also call this equally weighted. And now Jorian in his te textbook calls this a moving average, which is fine as well. Moving average is implicitly equally weighted. And what are we doing here notationally? Well, first, let's get comfortable with this sigma sub n squared. Hopefully, sigma's starting to connote for you the standard deviation, and sigma squared is the variance. And so this is the variance today, n connotes today. I happen, you know, we're in John Hull, and he happens to work in a daily period. So it happens to be today's estimate of variance. See how that is? Sigma squared is the variance. N connotes today. Usually we want to specify by itself, this would be a little bit imprecise in regard to the period. Is this, to, uh, is this a daily volatility, a monthly volatility? Could it be an annual volatility? It really could be any of those. Um, so we usually want to uh, specify, that's why you'll see in a question, something like 10%, we, we could see 10% volatility per annum. Right, So the question would specify the period annual. It's not indicated here. We just know we're in John Hall. And he's dealing with a daily variance here. So the, vol the daily volatility would be just sigma. Squaring that is the daily variance estimate. And so we want to keep that in mind because we can make a, there's an easy tactical mistake. We can forget to take the square root. We want to remember to take the square root of a variance if the question asks for the volatility of standard deviation. And I do tend to use volatility and standard deviation interchangeably. Volatility does connote standard deviation. Arguably, it connotes an annual standard deviation, but it's not really technically precise. So we usually want the, the question will specify whether it's a daily, it wants a daily or, or assumes a daily or wants an annual or assume an annual. And generally we can, we can view standard deviation as interchangeable with volatility squaring either of those to get the variance. And in this case, it's a daily estimate. And the thing about um, this John Hall is we go in Volatility is interesting. It's not like the price of a security or a stock where we observe it today. Volatility is something that, in a way, does not exist in the moment. There is no such thing as today's volatility. If you think about it, we need a history of return data in order to compute the volatility statistic. So it summarizes a history. It doesn't exist on its own. So technically, we're, in, we're estimating the instantaneous volatility because it's not something we observe. Now, if we compute